Okay, sir. Hello all. Today we are going to see unsubtractive bending. How to compute the principal axis of an unsubtractive cross section beam. So before going to see this point, let us see what is unsubtractive bending. Before going to see what is unsubtractive bending, let us see what is symmetrical and unsubtractive cross section. So unsubtractive cross section, cross section we all know. This is a rectangular section is here. Cross section is here. Double symmetrical cross section. If you cut the 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 section along the vertical axis, you can have two halves. Similarly, if you cut the vertical the section along the axis, you get two halves. So it is a double symmetrical section. So this is the one example. So we have a section, a thin wall I section is the example of double symmetrical cross section, right? So this also, if you cut along the vertical axis, you get two halves, and if you cut along the vertical axis, you get two halves. So this is a double symmetrical cross section. So we can give the example of T section as a single symmetrical cross section. So if you see this T section, if you cut along the vertical axis, you get only one symmetry. If you cut along the horizontal axis, it won't get the symmetry. It won't give the symmetry. So uh, so these are the symmetrical cross section. So symmetrical cross sections can be divided into double symmetric or singly symmetric. So now there are some uh, cross sections where we don't have neither uh, uh, single symmetry nor uh, uh, double symmetry. For example, C section. So it is uh, even if you cut along the axis, it won't give symmetry. Even if you cut along the axis, it won't give symmetry. So it is an example of unsymmetrical cross section. So in today's experiment, we are going to see how to compute the the principal axis for this unsymmetrical cross section. So so far we have seen uh, uh, symmetrical cross section. So I have told there are two types of symmetrical cross section: one is singly symmetry and doubly symmetry. So now let us see the example of uh, unsymmetrical cross section. So example uh, a Z section. If you see, uh, if you cut along the vertical axis, I won't get the symmetry. Similarly, if you cut along the horizontal axis, I won't get the symmetry. So this is the example of a of an unsymmetrical cross section. Similarly, here also we can see the T section. Again, if I cut along the vertical axis, I won't get the symmetry. Similarly, if I cut along the horizontal axis, I won't get the symmetry. So these are the two examples for an unsymmetrical cross section. So now let us see what is unsymmetrical bending. So unsymmetrical bending is nothing but it occurs when the cross section of the beam is unsymmetrical, case one, or when the line of loading does not pass through the principal axis of the cross section. Then unsymmetrical bending will occur. So just now we have seen the what do you what do you mean by symmetrical bending, unsymmetrical bending. So now let us see the the theory of bending uh, by using a formula. So we all you all are aware about the theory of bending. This is a very famous structure formula or bending formula. So by using this formula, one can compute the bending stress of a beam subjected to a transverse load or bending moment, and also one can find the deflection of the beam when subjected to bending moment or transverse loads. So, for example, just let me explain all the parameters. So, M is the applied bending moment or applied load, and I is the second moment of area or moment of inertia. Uh, that is the geometrical uh, parameter of the beam of the beam cross section, and sigma is the bending stress or direct stress, which is the response of the applied load. So this is the direct stress or bending stress, and y is nothing but the distance uh, the distance between the interlace and the and the area of interest. So for example, this is the I have taken a rectangular beam cross section. So I have defined the area. That is the breadth into depth. So we all know the second moment of area for the rectangular beam is B d by 12. So this is my area of interest. So if I want to compute the stress at this point, then my my y is nothing but the distance from the middle axis to the uh, point of interest. That is called the this uh, y. And E is the material property. So it depends upon the material. For aluminium, it is 200 gigapascal. Sorry, 70 gigapascal. First, it is 200 gigapascal. And R is nothing but the radius of curvature. So, so this is the this is called the, the famous uh, uh, structure formula. So, from this structure formula, 
uh, one can compute the axis of uh, uh, the, principal, uh, the, angle, the principal axis angle in terms of second moment of areas. So, so now uh, let us see the theoretical uh, formula to compute the, the principal axis of the uh, given cross section. So, theta p is nothing but the angle of the principal axis, the angle between the principal axis and the, the horizontal axis is called uh, OX. So, the, so that is called theta p. So, by using this formula, one can compute the principal axis of a, uh, of a beam cross section. So, in our case, we need to compute the principal axis of the given Z section or Z section. So, that is why we are going to use the formula. So, the theta p can be computed based on the geometrical parameters that is called the product moment of inertia, that is Ixy and also Iyy, the moment of inertia along the y axis and the moment of inertia along the x axis. So, if you know this, uh, this three moment of inertia or the three second moment, moment of area, then it is possible for us to compute the principal angle of any uh, cross section. So, by this way, it is possible for us to compute the principal angle of the z section. So now, how are we going to compute the principal axis of the given z section use, using exponential method? So for that, we need to compute the, the vertical and horizontal deflection. The V indicates the, the vertical deflection and U indicates the horizontal deflection. So once, I, once we know the deflection of both vertical and horizontal uh, directions, then it is possible for us to compute the principal angle of the given uh, cross section exponentially. So, so far we have seen the theory of unsymmetrical bending and also we have seen the formula to compute the principal axis of a beam cross section. So, let us see the schematic of the beam of the external setup. So, we are going to use a cantilever beam. So, you all know what is cantilever. One end is fixed and one end is free. So, we are going to use a cantilever beam. Uh, so, this is the bonding condition. So, one, one, of, the end of, one end of beam is, is fixed and the other end is free. So the load will be updated at the free end. So, so now I am going to make a cut somewhere at any section of the, at the along the length of the beam. So this is the, the side view of the beam. You can see already I mentioned we are going to understand the unsymmetrical bending. So for that we have to use unsymmetrical cross section. So the Z section is the yet to be the example for an unsymmetrical cross section. So just I have given the the geometry of the, uh, the Z uh, cross section. So it has two flanges. The horizontal portion is called flange and the vertical portion is called the web. And uh, also I have defined the, the coordinates. The horizontal axis is the X axis and the vertical axis is the Y axis. And uh, the length of the beam is Z. So towards the board is the Z direction. So we have defined the coordinates X, Y, Z. So now, you can see the dimension of that uh, of that uh, z cross section. The flange breadth is 51 mm. The thickness of the flange is 3 mm. Similarly, uh, it applies for the top flange also. The height of the web is 22 mm. And the thickness of the web also is 3 mm. So now we know the geometry. So now uh, let us see what is principal axis. So let us see which axis we are going to compute. Uh, using theoretical formula exponential, exponential method. So, for the as I told earlier, the principal axis of the unsymmetrical cross section does not coincide with the the x or y axis. If it is symmetrical cross, uh, if, if it is a symmetrical cross section, then I can say that my principal axis will coincide with the the x or y axis. But in, as it is unsymmetrical cross section, it won't coincide. So, this, the, the angle of uh, the, the location of the principal axis is unknown to us. So, how to compute it? So, here we are going to use a term called theta p, that is the principal angle. There is the angle between the, the axis OX to the principal axis, that is, that is the theta p. So, this is what we are going to compute in today's experiment. So, anyway, this is the, you can see the yellow color thing. We are going to apply the load, vertical load. Along uh, the both ends of the uh, beam, and also we are going to apply the horizontal, horizontal load. So, by applying this uh, vertical and horizontal load, we are going to compute the vertical and horizontal deflection. Once we know the vertical and horizontal deflection, it is possible for us, for us to compute the principal angle of this, uh, sorry, principal axis of this uh, uh, 
So far, uh, we have seen the theory of bending, uh, we have seen the formula uh, for theory of bending, we have seen the schematic of that uh, external set up for the beam cross section. Now, we are going to see how to uh, take the data from the external, from the external center. So, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to apply two loads, vertical load and horizontal load. So, in this uh, experiment, we are going to keep the vertical load as constant. So, we are going to apply two kg of vertical load and uh, that will be the, the load will be the constant. And then we are going to increase the horizontal load step by step. So, let us assume I am going to apply 200 grams or 0.2 kg uh, of load horizontally. So, now the beam, now the beam is being such a, subjected to vertical load of 2 kg and the horizontal load of 0.2 kg. So, because of this load, there will be deflection. So, we have two error indicators uh, on both vertical and horizontal direction. So, that will give the horizontal deflection called U and vertical uh, deflection called B. So, we are going to measure the deflection uh, U and B. And then uh, we know the applied horizontal weight, we know the applied vertical load or weight. Then we can take that, we can divide and then we will we'll take that uh, number. And also we know the U and B, so you can you can uh, divide the U and B and you get one value. So, so this way we are going to capture the data. So just now we have seen how to capture the data, we have seen the tabulation. Uh, from the tabulation uh, we have got two data, the load ratio, that is the, the ratio of uh, hazard load and the vertical load, we have taken the component and also for each uh, load set, we, are, we also have taken the deflection ratio, that is hazard deflection to the vertical deflection. So, this, uh, already we, uh, we have these two data, WH by, uh, by WB uh, and also U by B. So, let us plot a graph, let us take the x axis as either U by B, the ratio of the deflection and uh, we will take the the load ratio along the y axis. So now already we have got some by 6 readings. So let us plot the, the WH by WB and U by B. So you, you get uh, some different data points like this. So now uh, join, uh, connect all the data points, you get a linear curve. Now uh, just draw a 45 degree curve uh, from the origin. So, this 45 degree curve will inter intercept this data point at some time. So, here it is, it is uh, intersecting. So, now take down this value. So, this is the point. So, this uh, take down this u baby. So, inverse, uh, take the inverse of this u baby and use in the already existing formula. So, already we have seen the formula at the beginning of this uh, uh, session. So, once I know the, the value of u by u, then I can take the canvas, uh, I can compute the principal, the, the angle of the uh, principal axis. So, uh, for Z section, it would be around 30 to 35 degree. So, this way, uh, it is possible for us to compute the angle of the principal axis of an unsymmetrical cross section. So, we have employed the experimental method to compute this data. Similarly, we can also compute this uh, theta p theoretically. So, uh, in the beginning, I have given the formula. So, once you know the, the moment of inertia of the cross section, then it is possible for us to compute the, uh, the angle of the principal axis theoretically. So, today we have seen how to compute the, the angle of principal axis of ensemble cross section using experimental method and theoretical method. For unsymmetrical bending of beams, we have an experimental setup which has a beam of length 50 cm and then we have a flange of length 51 mm and web of length 72 mm. For applying load, we have two hooks to apply vertical load and then we have a support mechanism wherein we have a load applying point to apply load in the horizontal direction which is given as a tension by the string. We have two dial gauges, one on the top side and one on the side. So for this, we
we have that I have used to measure deflection in y axis so we will name it v and for horizontal deflection we are measuring we will name it as u so we will measure u and v on these two dial gauges for the applied loads for the given experiment we are going to apply a constant load in the vertical direction and we are going to vary the horizontal load by applying load in this point and we will be able to take deflections for the corresponding loads so this will be tabulated and we can plot the deflection ratio versus the load ratio and we will be able to compute the theta p first we will go with vertical loading okay vertical loads are placed then horizontal loading okay first set of load second set of load third set fourth set fifth set sixth set seventh set eighth set okay now we will go with unloading unload the horizontal loads one by one Okay, first we will go ahead with the uh, vertical weight hangers. Huh? Okay, vertical weight hangers. Next, horizontal weight. Place it on guru. Exactly right. Perfect. Next, dial gauges. This is for vertical, vertical displacement. Next one, keep it zero. Next dial gauge for horizontal displacement. Okay. Then adjust it for zero. Perfect. We'll go ahead with the dismantling. First dial gauge. Okay. Next weighing hooks. Hook for horizontal one. Done. 